everybody for attending. A very warm welcome to you on this particularly cold day in February, which is actually five years to the day and the hour since my last lecture on a Sunday evening. So, um, this one is going to be called, as you've been told, The Drama of Duality in the Tower in Shakespeare. And I'm very excited to deliver this to you because I feel that it presents a new vision of Shakespeare. <coughs> who's, as we know, been, has been with us for over 400 years. But thanks to the esoteric wisdom of the tarot, we can now see and understand Shakespeare in a new light. And at the same time, we have the ability to, to see how the tarot works in reality, how it throws light on our daily life. Speaking of which, this is more than just um, a talk. I don't, I don't do dry lectures. I prefer to engage with the audience a little bit. And tonight I'm going to be presenting you with the ability to ask yourselves what these life situations mean to you. We're going to be looking at seven with the help of film clips from Shakespeare uh, as presented, <coughs> as directed by great directors of the cinema. Accompanying each film clip will be um, the chance for you to give me feedback on how you feel about each of the major life situations that the film will be illustrating. This is the first one, for example, your life force energy. So I will be, be very happy for you to, to comment and to contribute when we, when we look at each question. So, the drama of duality. What do I mean by duality? I, I, I take it that everybody is familiar with this term. What I mean by duality is really nothing other than reality. Because it is said that we are spiritual beings. Having, we are having a human experience. And for me, this human experience, this reality of the human experience, is duality. And for that reason, I don't take it as original sin, or as something to struggle with, or a big problem in our life. I take it as a friend. But all these other descriptions of duality I have seen, believe it or not, in books. Making me quite scared almost that life is such a burden, such a struggle, such a mountain to overcome. Do you, how do you deal with duality? How do you balance the opposites in our life? I don't take that as a problem, having studied the subject intensively for quite some time. I take duality to be our friend. And the only problem with it, as we will see in this lecture, is when we mess with it. When we try to make our lives complicated, or when we try to kind of conquer duality, and think that we can ignore the whole thing and just do whatever we please. We can have only positive thoughts. We can never have. We can eliminate all negative thoughts, all negative feelings and situations, and only think and feel positively. That's what I call messing with duality. And it takes a, a terrific effort to do that. Life doesn't have to be that complicated. It can be easy. Yeah? Just as the town teaches, to allow reality to unfold how it wants to for us in our life, any way it wants to. What happens in Shakespeare is dramatic situations that really show how life could have been a lot easier. And we're going to be looking at these today. It's not going to be <coughs> blah, 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 blowing at you. We're going to be looking at, um, as I said, film clips from great, um, great performances of Shakespeare. And I'll be analysing these in some detail. So I hope you're up for that. Yeah. yeah. Great. Okay. Uh, let's move on to the. I can find my pointer. Right. Here we go. Okay. Heraclitus gave us a very good insight into what this whole subject is about. Heraclitus, as you know, was the, the philosopher, mystic of um, 500 years BC, who said that everything is changing all the time. He said, the dynamism between opposites is a driving force of the universe. Strife and opposition are both necessary and good. Universal tension ensures that the change is continual, that everything is in a state of flux. And his words were taken up quite recently in our own time 
by, believe it or not, one of, one of the great um, teachers of non-duality, Ramesh Bausikar, he said, everything is changing. And this change is based on interconnected opposites. So in this material world, we have the chance to... Uh, we come from oneness, yes? But in this material world, we're not in oneness anymore. We're in duality. But it's because of these opposites that we have the chance to, to assume a kind of oneness by, bringing, by allowing the opposites to, be, to make a unity in our life. And this teacher of non-duality actually uh, acknowledges that. Here, are, uh, here is an illustration of the general picture of um, male and female energies in the concept of duality. First of all, we've got the um, Theosophical Society symbol, which is the double triangle, six-pointed six star. Uh, within that, we have a, a vision of the tantric union, the union of opposites between male and female. And um, this is one of the great dualities of our life, together with inner and outer, together with material and spiritual, together with being and doing. The red triangle pointing upwards symbolizes the materialized, sorry, the spiritualization of matter. And the blue triangle pointing down is the materialization of spirit, the feminine, that's the feminine triangle, feminine action or energy, um, which is the energy of, of passivity. The red triangle is active, the blue triangle is passive. And then again, we have another duality. On the right, we have what's inside us. On the left, we have what's outside. What's on the right, we have inside, which is the, known as the macabre, which is our energy body. And again, it is composed of two triangles, or three-dimensional star tetrahedrons, or one star tetrahedron, three-dimensional pyramids. And this again shows that every human being is composed of an equal balance of active and uh, passive energy. And this is how we are naturally. So we don't have to be in a relationship, we don't have to be interacting with the opposite as on the left. We have this within us already. So we have the, uh, the outer and the inner in balance. The Divine Mother, Shakti, that's another name for this, this blue triangle energy, the, the passive energy. The Divine Father, or Shiva, or fire, that is the upward pointing triangle, the active energy, our outer life. And as I said, this, this, this is beneficial, and as Heraclitus said, this is necessary and good. This, this system of duality is entirely beneficial and, um, to, uh, and, and bearable, as long as we don't mess with it. Now, what, what we're going to look at next is how the tarot portrays this relationship. The first and the last cards in the major arcana, there are 22. Is there any way that can be right? Could we miss an on It would be better if you changed your seat. Oh, no, we'll leave it. can't see it, otherwise. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. There are some spare seats. On yes, the yeah. Okay. So, the, the first and the last cards symbolize the same process of balancing male and female, passive and negative, uh, passive and active. Acting on desire is the fool on the left, and, and that's the first card, and the last card is known as the world on the right. The fool is, as I said, the active masculine energy, which is our impulse to step out into the world and to seek to attain, uh, to seek, explore, and attain the object of our desires. We have this impulse all the time to be positive, to be active, to move out into the world. At the same time, we have the feminine side of us, the allowing side, called the world, which is this dancer, dancing happily and unconcernedly. And she really represents the attainment of our desires, but it's not whether we actually attain our desire, it's whether we are at peace with ourselves during this whole process. Whether, in other words, the attainment of the desire without actually having to attain it because that's what allowing is all about. Allowing reality to be just as it is. And knowing that we ourselves are complete, whether or not we have achieved anything, whether or not we've passed that interview, 
or get, get that job or marry that person. We are completing ourselves and it's always in this moment. As H.P. Blavatsky says, thou art thyself the object of thy search. Beneath that, I have um, placed um, a reminder of what the popular um, Western uh, Anglo-Saxon tarot that looks like, called the Rider Waite, which completely departs from this esoteric wisdom. If you have a look, if you can see, I hope, the fall is actually um, striding forth in the opposite direction to the world. It's trying to escape from the world, which is not how, it, how the situation is. And also about to tumble over the edge of a precipice. So just make, make what sense of that you can. I can't make any sense of it. Um, the, real, the real esoteric wisdom is the fall and the world meeting each other. And the fall coming from this, this um, all of us coming from this uh, state of allowing, of being. Okay, so how does Shakespeare uh, illustrate this? Um, in a series of plays, um, starting from Richard III and going up to Macbeth, ten of his major plays illustrate, each one illustrates each of these dualities. And it is the play as a whole. I have some leaflets here which give you a comprehensive description of the play and how it, how it um, illustrates the, the duality, the whole play. But what we're looking at today is just scenes from plays. It's beyond the scope of this talk to talk about a whole play. So we're just looking at a scene as a microcosm. Um, and on the top row, we have the, the card symbolising the red triangle, which is um, the magician to the will of fortune, number 1 to 10. On the bottom row, we have the blue triangle cards, the passive cards, um, which are more mythical and spiritual, from strength to judgment. Okay? Now, if you read those cards vertically, what you've got is 10 pairs of cards, numerologically pairing up with each other. Number 1 with number 11, number 2 with number 12, number 3 with number 13, and so on. And these, um, these cards, these 22 cards, are in themselves profound how can I say, uh, profound states of being, experiences in life. Even more profound is when you pair them up and you have ten dualities. This, this duality really is, each one of these dualities really does govern our life. Starting with uh, the major duality, uh, I mean, it's the, the overall duality between the fall and the world. Duality of love, I call it. So, are you all, all with me so far? I have a layout of tarot cards there on the front. You can see later on how, how they actually look, uh, real life size. So we're just about ready now to, to launch into the, the first of um, seven of these dualities. Uh, we haven't got time to look at all ten tonight, but we will, we will study seven of them and um, reflect how, how they pan out in our own life. So the first one um, is... These two, okay? So this is the number one, the magician, and number 11, the strength uh, card, known as La Force in French. And as it's, these are the first cards of the series, they, they really um, symbolize beginnings. Beginnings of activity and enthusiasm to start a project and beginning of strength or upsurge of life force energy. One um, is a shadow of the other. One is <coughs> channeled through the activity of the, of the other. So what I'd like to, first of all, as the first question to you, and to invite your responses, how do you feel your life force energy, which is the magician and strength? Um, on the magician side, sorry, let's start with the strength side. On the strength side, maybe at this moment, how do you feel your life force energy? Right now, I'm feeling some radi radioactive disturbance in my energy field because of these microphones. Okay? But um, my voice feels a bit hoarse. Now, how do you feel your energy sitting there in the chair in this very warm room on this cold day listening to me? And, and secondly, how do you activate it? What gets your energy going? What, what, what fills you with vitality? What sparks your, your energy into action?
Are you asking everybody? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the first of the seven that we're looking at tonight, and with each one I invite you to just, just briefly, one or two comments from somebody, from anybody, um, to, uh, to, show that, to show that you yourself have some kind of connection to this, because this is not just a lecture, it's experiential. So I'm very happy for anybody to, to comment, if you, if you have a particular experience of, of the subject, to, to share with us. You talked about the first pair being the beginning, as it were. Yes. And I f identify with them and feel I'm a beginner. I don't know how to put it into other words. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Anyone else? It's your, your feelings. Your, your feelings. No. You make me feel. It's not your feelings. It's your, your vitality. The first, the first duality is your vitality, okay? At present. At this moment, it's always in the now, yes, in the present moment. How do you feel your vitality? In other words, how do you feel the, the uh, inception of it, the upsurge of it? And then how do you feel yourself uh, channeling it, utilising it? Yeah. Mine is similar to this gentleman's here. Um, I've come to, to see what is being done here in the philosophical society. Okay, so this is more on the mental side. Um, the magician is the mental side of this energy. Yeah. Forces is physical, physical, instinctive side. Uh, right. Yeah, I won't say it's all mental, it's something else as well. Okay. Uh, yeah, instincts as well. And so that's, and there is, the energy of vitality is to know more about it. Mm -hmm. right, for my own satisfaction. Okay, that, that, again, that again is on the magician, the magician side. The, 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 uh, the mental, the uh, channeled side of your, your energy. Okay, let's have a look at how Shakespeare illustrates this subject in the first play, which you should all have on your handout. This is a history play, Richard III. Sorry. Um, this is changing the history. Okay, potential. Um, Richard III, right, and some films there as well, um, which may well illustrate this whole theme. Um, uh, Richard III is a play all about uh, a villain, an out-and-out rogue of his time, who was um, constant, constantly striving and struggling to climb up the greasy pole of the, the royal family in those days to reach the top and become the king uh, at the end of the, the era of the Wars of the Roses. And he, he, he really does, all, I, I don't... I don't condone anything what he does for one moment, okay? But um, Shakespeare does present us with a wonderful illustration of the relationship, the mirror-like relationship between these two sides of our energy. On the one side, inner potential, you've got his courage, his physical presence, his strength, his animal nature. And this, I hope, will come out in the film. On the other side, you've got his ability to communicate, because this is central to the magician. If you want to start a new project, if you want to start a job or get people to join you, you've got to go out there and communicate fast, rapidly and powerfully and effectively. And he, is, he excels at this. Theatricality as well. See, the magician is quite a performer, yeah? quite an entertainer. And so is Richard. Although he's a, he's a villain, he's possibly you could say he's evil, we actually find what he does in a, in a way quite ridiculously in, in, uh, amusing. Um, it, although it's so hard, horrendous. Self-confidence, he's breathing with self-confidence and of course he's an opportunist. There are more um, qualities of the magician, but these are for me possibly the primary qualities that are illustrated by um, Richard uh, in, the, in the play, Richard, Duke of, uh, Duke of Gloucester. So here we have um, the clip that we'll be looking at. Um, on all the red, anything in red is the active side of the duality. Anything in blue is the passive side. So on the, on the red, in the, uh, we've got communication, theatricality, self-confidence, opportunism. Communication, um, he, he strides into the room where there was a meeting being held of uh, um, the, how can I say, the, 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 what the fact that the uh, the royal, the royal, the, the, the royal pers personality, 